This is my Trek Madon disc. I absolutely love it. And I mean, I'm a very lucky boy indeed. But before we go any further and I tell you all the details about the bike, I think we should just take a minute. I mean, look at it. I'm first going to start with the paint because my Trek has a rather special paint job. It's got a two-tone design here with matte and gloss black finishes. And I really like how the gloss black Trek logo contrasts against the matte frame. It's nice and subtle, but looks really cool. But my favorite bit is this iridescent paint on the top section. It's really beautiful and it changes color depending on the light and the angle which you view it from. It's kind of a bit like the paint that you may have seen on the old TVR Cerberus cars back in the day. The Madone is a very aerodynamic design and replaces the outgoing model, which was the one that Lasty had with a custom paint job. It's a very nice custom paint job, that actually. I can't remember who, who designed it. Anyhow, there's lots of cool features. So the first big difference between the outgoing Madone, like what Lasty had, is that this one is available in disc and rim brake versions. The previous one was just rim brake. And as you can see, mine is the disc brake one and it doesn't have the vector wings at the front anymore. They were the little flaps that popped out as you turned the steerer tube. There's also an adjustable ISO speed decoupler located in the top tube here. And this is to give compliance on the seat post and the rear end to make it more comfortable. And Trek reckons that in its maximum setting, this is now 17% more comfortable than Lasty's version. Also, another advantage is that because it's now located in the top tube and not in the seat tube, it means that the amount of compliance you get is not determined by how much seat post you're running. So basically, if you ran less seat tube with your bike, you would have less compliance. Now you can adjust it by undoing a little Allen bolt here or hex bolt, and then pushing the slider along to tune the compliance. I run it here, which is in not the maximum compliance, but close to it. And I just love how the bike feels in this setting, having played around with it quite a bit. Now this is an aero bike. So I wanted to put some deep section wheels in because I just feel that aero bikes just don't look right with shallow wheels. They just don't go together. Kind of like orange juice and toothpaste. Ugh. So I've gone full bore and banged in a set of these seriously bling Zip 858 NSWs. I mean, look at these bad boys. The 858 is one of the latest wheels from Zip and features the little hyperfoils or nodules on the rim. Now, this was sort of inspired by the tubercles on the fins of humpback whales, which is said to make humpback whales remarkably agile and hydrodynamically stable creatures for their massive size. Now, Zip has sort of been inspired by this and taken this hydrodynamic advantage and turned it into an aerodynamic one. But irrespective of that, they look amazing and they sound absolutely mint, like there's a sound as you ride along in the free hub. Well, check this out. Onto the rims, I fitted a pair of Continental GP4000 S2 tires in 25 millimeter width, front and rear. And I haven't fitted the GP5000s yet because, well, I haven't managed to get my grubby little hands on a pair of those at the time of filming, but I can't wait to put them on. In terms of the size of the bike, I'm six foot one or 185 centimeters, and I'm riding a 56 centimeter frame. And my saddle height from the center of the BB to the top middle of the saddle is 77 centimeters. My stem is 120 centimeters long, and my bars are just 38 centimeters wide. I don't have the widest of frames, so for me, there's no issue with riding a narrower bar. I feel comfortable even when going on really long rides for extended periods of time. But the main reason is that they allow me to get much smaller at the front end, much more narrow and aerodynamic, and they feel a lot faster. And the bike originally came with 44 centimeter bars, 
And for me, the contrast between the two is absolutely huge. It's also worth pointing out that the cockpit is a sort of integrated two-piece system with a separate bar and stem. And this is another big difference from Lasty's Madone. And the advantage of this is that you can tune your exact stem length and bar width and also adjust your bar angle as well with greater flexibility. Also on the cockpit is an out front mount for my Wahoo Bolt computer. Now at the time of making this video, Bontrager don't currently make a Wahoo out front mount. So this is a custom made 3D printed one, which I think is a definite hack. My saddle is a Physique Arione 00. Now saddle choice is hugely personal, but this is the shape that I get along really well with. And the 00 notation means that this is Physique's top of the range model. It's the lightest and it looks proper tasty. Now in a desperate bid to look more pro, I also have a custom name sticker on the top tube. Now this mainly serves my own vanity, but also acts as a deterrent to would-be thieves in the GCN Presenters bike shed. The group set on my Madone is Jura Ace DI2 with hydraulic disc brakes, and I'm running a 5339 standard chain set and an 1128 cassette on the rear, but I will change this cassette out depending on the terrain or the style of riding I'm doing. So I've put on 1130, and sometimes I've even put on an 1132. I like having a 5339 chain set because once you get it up to speed and you get it turning, it just feels really efficient. And I also like the feeling of having something to push against sometimes too. Now the keen eye of you may have noticed a little bit of battle damage on my rear mech. There's a slight scuff there. Well, let you into a secret. That was caused when I slid off on an oil patch at, at Ride London. But don't, don't tell anyone, okay? I don't want Trek to know, okay? Shh. Bottle cages are Bontrager Triple X. They're very light, they're made of carbon, just 19 grams, and I love the way they look too. But how about the total weight of the bike? Well, let's bring out the GCN Scales of Truth and see how much it weighs. So there you have it, the Scales of Truth are saying 8.09 kilograms, which has surprised me a little bit, to be honest, but it is in line with a lot of top-end, super aero hydraulic disc brake bikes, but it is significantly heavier than a lot of top-end climbing bikes out there. But in many cases, aero trumps weight. Now, because I don't have as much aerobic talent as I quite like, I look for other ways to close the gap, and one of the ways I'll try and do that is by riding an aero bike and using science and getting a nice aerodynamic position with a narrow handlebar. I hope you've enjoyed this look at my Trek Madone disc. I absolutely love it. And if you have, then please give the video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe. And if you'd like to watch another video, then why not check out this one down here of my Canyon CF SLX that I used in my Everesting challenge. And perhaps let us know in the comments which one you prefer, the canyon or the trek?